In chapter 14, KP brings up this idea of should we go to the missions field or should we send somebody to the missions field? I think he kicks off this this with a really kind of harsh or not maybe harsh, but a challenging statement it says, if the task of world evangelism depended on sending the white missionary, obeying the Great Commission would become more impossible every single day. And what he means by that is he's speaking primarily to Western Europe and the United States of America, where we have this idea that when it comes to world missions, we must send a Caucasian person or somebody from the United States who is wealthy, essentially, over to these countries in order to see the evangelism happen. And here's what's crazy. Statistically, he's accurate on this one. Did you know that of the first world or, or um, yeah, so basically wealthy nations, only 14% of all of the world's population live in the Western Europe or United States of America. And these first world top, these, these, these really advanced societies that are, are top GDP of the, of the world is only 14% of the world population. And that is shrinking every single day. 81% of the world, another statistic is 81% of the world is non-Caucasian, non-white vast majority if you're caucasian or white you're actually in the minority when it comes to the rest of the world and i know that might like shock you a little bit um especially when you're you're out in arizona or i know i used to live in north dakota right but the reality is you're actually the minority on a global scale and so i, I bring this up because kp is right if it def depends on that then world missions is going to be it's going to just not doesn't have enough people to go. So maybe instead of going, we should actually send local missionaries or send people who already live in the country outward. And he gives four reasons why this would be good. And we're going to walk through them one at a time fairly quickly. The very first thing he says why we should send a local person to be a missionary or support a, support a, la, a national missionary is because it's wise stewardship. See, the difference between sending a U.S. citizen or a person who lives in the country is drastically different. So let's pick uh, Kenya again. So to send a U.S. citizen to Kenya, typically we're going to sponsor them at $3,000 per month. For that same ministry or missionary, if they were a Kenyan living in Kenya, we could support them at $300 a month. If you just simply do like the calculation of like a one-way ticket to somewhere over in a Africa or Asia, the, the cost for that one-way ticket is like two or three months of support for a local minister, not including. So it, why is this? The big difference is because, you know, a U.S.-based missionary has insurance and taxes and visas, and they have to be able to come back home, as well as typically our lifestyle is a little bit higher than the locals. I, as a U.S. citizen, don't want to sleep on a dirt floor. I'm going to want to rent a nice place that makes me feel comfortable, even though I'm being in missionaries. Now, I don't want to say this is true for all, but by and large, we could support 10 or 15 local missionaries over there already for the cost of sending one U.S. citizen over to that country. So why stewardship? A good return on investment. Secondly, he, he kind of throws it out. He says, avoid colonialism, which basically, you know, the, the Western Europe went and they took over parts of all of Africa and most of the world and they built it. And what can happen is if we as Westerners go overseas, then people see our church as the American church or the Western church. So, for example, in Iraq, there were actually Christians that had churches but once the United States invaded Iraq in 2003, then all of the Christians were shunned and pushed aside because they said, oh, they're Western church people and they're infiltrating our culture. When that wasn't true, but because of that event, it got connected. And so now Iraqis see church and Christians as Western influence rather than Jesus Christ influence. And so, he, so he says, well, by, by supporting a local missionary, you can avoid this, this misperception of us imparting or us forcing our culture onto their culture. The other one that I think is even a second best one is the self-sustainment idea. 
know, the average U.S. citizen will support a missionary for about seven years, which is a good amount of time. But even if my church currently sponsors a missionary, typically when a pastor leaves or an elder leaves, that missionary support ends. And so if there's a missionary that's dependent on our finances, once we change, then they can no longer be missionaries. But a local person who's working there can get support by local people and stay ministry for a lot less than a United States person being there. Again, finances return. But the big one, I would say, is simply it's just less restrictive. You guys just finished your UPG project and know that those are the hardest places ever to get. Get to those places rather than me trying to go there. It's easier for somebody who lives right next door to them to walk, you know, 200 miles or 100 miles in rather than me flying 20,000 miles to get there. And I think about the fact that like there are tribes in Brazil that I was going to, I was working with and we were going to go and reach the unreached people groups in Brazil. But the reality was we were only allowed to go to a certain point by government restrictions. So we ended up training the local tribal leaders because they said, if you train us, then we will go further into the jungles and train other people. And so locals have more access to unreached people groups than I do or Westerners do or you do. And so those so sending to local missionaries can be much more effective in reaching unreached people groups. Plus, they probably speak the language already natively, so they don't have to study languages and all of those details with it. Now, interesting fact, do you know that most unreached people groups in the world, the most inaccessible people group, as he mentions, is women. Uh, the most unreached people group, especially in the Middle East, is women. Because in a lot of countries, women are uh, held away or kept away from general public. And so there's Sharia law, which is that basically in the Middle East, a lot of countries believe that women are lesser than men. Ladies, if you're in the U.S., be thankful for your freedoms. I'm going to go through some, some examples of how women actually live in the Middle East. So like in Yemen, women cannot leave the house without their husband's permission or you will be beaten. If you're, if you're not married, then it's got to be your father's. In much of those other ones, if you want to go traveling, you must get their written and certified permission in order to leave the country. In Saudi Arabia, you have to get written permission to go on a public bus or transportation or take an Uber or a Lyft, you would need a written permission from your husband or a close father relative. If you're going to school, which is amazing, by the way, Saudi Arabia, women just this year or last year got their ability to even drive. Um, but if you go to college and you're a woman, you actually have to sit in a whole separate room, separate from the men and the professor and watch by TV as he's talking and lecturing to men. And so I just want to give you an idea that we in the West um, have so many more freedoms for females and for women. And, and um, there is an opportunity here, however, for women to be minis minis missionaries. 70% of missionaries overseas right now are women, which is awesome. I just have a friend who just returned from, a, from being a missions in a Muslim land. It was super cool. She got, because she's a woman, she was able to reach these women who may not be let out of their house before. So a man, like I could never minister to any of these. And so what we can do, one of the best ways to send our support is rather than sending a Western missionary, so someone from the U.S. or Europe or developed nation, is to support a local missionary. It's less restrictive. They're more likely to get there. And like if I can support a woman, local woman missionary, she's going to have much more likelihood of access of reaching her neighbors who might be Muslim. So in my opinion, should I go as a missionary? Maybe. But should I send people? Yes. We have such a privilege and honor to send people and really advance the kingdom in an exponential way if we would choose to send people rather than go. So We'll talk about short-term missions, so then should we even do engage program? We'll get to that in the next section.